Good evening everyone, Late Night Mega here, and tonight we're playing Mega Man Battle Network. So put on your PJs and prepare for some cliches. 2001. So this game came out when I was in middle school, and I did not get it right away. I saw this in Nintendo Power, and I'm like, this isn't a 2D platformer. Like, I, I love Mega Man, but this isn't a 2D platformer. We've got this character named Lan. Um, Mega Man doesn't look like Mega Man. Uh, Guts Man doesn't really look like Guts Man. Fire Man doesn't really look like Fire Man. This game looks weird. I don't I don't know I'm gonna if I'm gonna like it. Then I had like um, enough money for my allowance uh, saved up to get a new game, and I'm like, okay, well, what should I get? I don't know what I want. And I'm like, well, there's this Mega Man Battle Network game. And I don't know if I'm going to like it. But, uh, you know, it is Mega Man, so I should give it a chance. And 15 minutes into the game, like, I was hooked. This is a great series, very unique battle system. We'll get into that, too. Uh, in fact, the, it's, it's so unique that the game has to give us a tutorial for it. I don't know of any other game series that has any sort of a battle system like this. Uh, it's very... It's like action, strategy, RPG combined. Combined. Alright, uh, meanwhile there's stuff going on on screen. So our main human character, Lan there, is just uh, waking up. He's a fifth grader. We have to check our PET. Uh, PET stands for Personal Terminal, uh, which is this thing. The design of it will change throughout the series. Uh, this is not my favorite version of the PET, but it's okay. And we got MegaMan.exe, and this is Mega Man. It looks quite different from, well, Mega Man's that we're used to. Uh, do take note of the poster in the background there. That is from Mega Man Legends 2. I love the references. Uh, the Mega Man Battle Network series actually takes place in an alternate timeline, so all the robot stuff didn't happen. Okay, so we need to check our mail. So our pet or our personal terminal here uh, lets us check email. You know, this is kind of like a precursor to smartphones and a lot of the technology we have today. Alright, net news. Uh, WWW Crime. That actually stands for World 3, which I'll call it that because it's easier to say than WWW uh, all the time. Although I think within the entire Battle Network series, I think World 3, I think it's only referenced as World 3 or, or explained to be, to mean World 3 like a couple of times. Um, I think it does more in network transmission, which is actually a 2D platforming version of the Battle Network series. Uh, okay, so there's net crime that released. Everything is like connected to the internet in this game. Every electronic thing is like connected to the internet. Sometimes it's kind of weird. Uh, we got a present. Use it well. Cross gun C. Okay, so that's a chip. I know what this does, so I'm gonna go over to our folder here. Uh, don't worry, I'll explain more about this uh, later on. We're gonna get rid of these X panels first. We don't need them. Uh, is there... Now, this is Land's room. <laughs> don't mind me if I go through the text uh, quickly. It's still a little early. We just got up. Uh, we'll talk to our mom here. Hi there. Breakfast is on the table. You have time to eat. I'm already late for school, but I have to eat breakfast before school. That's kind of a big breakfast. I never eat, like, a huge amount for breakfast, but I have to eat something. Otherwise, I will probably murder someone before lunch. As this is just how I am. Oh, hey, it's, uh, there's a dog. This TV is too old to have a jack in port. What does any of that mean? Well, we'll find out a little bit later. We gotta go through the tutorial first. Lan, you're late. Uh-oh. 
Uh, so, Mail or Mail. Uh, I'm going to call her Mailu. I like that name a little bit better. That's her name from the anime that went along with this. We've got so much to talk about. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder if Meilu can hear Mega Man when he says that. Maybe she's just ignoring it. People's ovens have been spitting fire all of a sudden. That's a uh, key detail. Well, that was a short walk. We're in class now. Yes, we're in the fifth grade. But this class... I wonder if Dex was held back. Then we have this person, Yai, is her name. And she'll tell you, okay, pet issue, I already explained that, personal terminal. It's kind of like a Tamagotchi. And it does, like, cell phone calls, email. Yeah. Does anyone watching this even know what a Tamagotchi is? Virus busting. Yeah, we're going to be battling viruses in this game. Uh, computer viruses, that is. Those are going to be our normal enemies. You definitely want to check around all these different things. And in some different games, you'll have different different spots will give you different items or different places to jack in or link in to the internet. Could have swore there's something you can get from the desk. I love Guts, man. That's Dex's desk. Okay, maybe not in this classroom, or maybe not in this game. Yeah, World 3 is scary, blah blah blah, spitting fire. Yeah, we have like roller skate, those roller skate shoes, we move around like this. I like it. We have like a cool looking main character. I like his design. I challenge you to a net battle. Okay, so net battle is when two net navvies, like Mega Man and Guts Man, uh, battle against each other. And Yai is a rich little brat girl. Uh, as you'll see. But these are our friends, I guess. Well, may lose our friend. Dex, I kind of viewed him as a bit of a bully, and he is kind of that way. Um, he'll warm up to us over the series, and over this game. Let's begin class. First period is virus busting. This is the type of school I want to go to. Who's read Net News? World 3 Net Crime is on the rise. Extra marks. We don't have to worry about grades or anything in this. Uh, I, I did know that, Mega Man. I read the email. And, yep, Dex is a show-off. And a loud mouth. A metool. I might call them Metars. I'll probably call them Metars. Doesn't one of the later games in the series call them Metars? Okay, so to jack into an electronic device and connect connect our net navvy to the internet, we have to, well, be next to said electronic device and press the R button. And that's the little sequence we get for jacking in. And now we have, like, our little virtual classroom here. Alright, so this is our tutorial. Okay, when fighting, you must first send chip data. So we have, this is where our folder comes in that you uh, saw earlier. And so we have 30 battle chips in our folder. And five of these chips will appear randomly at the start of every battle. 
see right there uh, now the a button you'll use to select the chips the chips will appear in battle in the order that you select them that will be very important to know throughout the series uh, because you really need to this is where strategy comes in. you need to plan out what your turn is going to look like before you activate it, you see the virus's HP, we have our HP. We can load up to five chips at once. All right, there's two rules for choosing chip data. Um, it wants us to select these two cannons, so you can select chips that have the same exact name, and you can select multiple chips. Uh, that way you ideally you want to be able to select as many chips as you can uh, to get the biggest advantage uh, and synergy that you can so we have two cannons since they're both cannons we can select them another way you can select chips is even if they have a different name you see that a l a n uh, j those are called the chip codes we're gonna learn that learn about that more in the next battle so now it's time to fight the virus viruses we move around on the red tiles the enemy moves around on the blue tiles up down left right uh, b button is our buster it's really weak and only does one damage right now we can get some upgrades for it throughout the game uh, but we won't worry about that now upper left is our hp so we don't want to run out of that so you press the b button to fire your buster a button to use uh use the next chip you have in in line there and it tells you at the bottom you can kind of see it between the text the canon 40 uh, gives you a little recap of the chip that you selected next and then our custom bar will fill as we're battling once it reaches full we can press l or r to go back to the battle setup screen and choose new chips and when you're in that uh that menu the battling itself is paused. Like I said, really unique battle system. So we can move around here. I'm on a GameCube controller, so we'll see how all this works. I'm so used to going for like timed, uh, is it timed counters is what it's called? Timed kills? That's not introduced until Battle Network 3. So I really don't need to be doing that. Okay, so now, we're talking about support chips, so not all chips do damage. Well, the steel can technically do damage. Another example would be those X panels. It will actually like knock out the panel in front of us. It has very limited advantages. Like we can use it to block the uh, Met Metool's attacks. I like Metar better. We can block the Metar's attacks that way. Uh, their little shockwave attacks. Maybe I'll demonstrate. Actually, we will be forced to demonstrate uh, what they do here. So here she's talking about the chip codes. Starting in Battle Network 2, there is an asterisk chip code, which I'll call the star chip code, because it's easier to say star chip code. Or star chips. Um, and that's like a wild card that you can use with any other chips. However, if you have like a, a chip code S, a chip code T, and we'll say they're the same. So we have a, a Steel S and a Steel T and a um, Cannon Star. You cannot select all three of those at once. The wild card is only good for one uh, to combine with one other chip code during a selection. Okay, so the strategy here, this is the part of the game where I started I started learning this. I'm like, okay, so we're going to use the steel. This will give us... The steel is actually really nice because it gives us more area to move around in and less area for our enemies to move around in. Of course, uh, every virus will have its own attack pattern and movement pattern. These mets, uh, depending on which mets turn it is, will attack us. Now, I'm uh, I took damage there. Now, you see, I'm moving back and forth because if I just uh, fire once... The rapid level on our buster is not very good, uh, and it's worse the f further apart, further away you are from the viruses. So the closer you are, the closer, the more rapid firing you can do. Also, if you do that back and forth movement, you can 
like artificially increase your rapid fire. It's a nice little strategy to use, especially in the early game. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a different ship. This is just a frontal assault. A lot of the chips will kind of show you or give you hints as to what they do. This mini bomb chip, it will throw a mini bomb exactly three squares away, so you really have to line this up. It's a little bit slow as well. Yeah, I consider that slow in this game. Uh, this game is all about like virus busting and uh, you want to finish your enemies like as quickly as you can. So chip adding. So the add feature, you probably won't really see me use it much in this game. Basically what you do is you select add instead of um, instead of any chips and you go an entire turn without battle chips so just your buster and then when you come back you'll have access to 10 chips to pick from uh, that will last I believe for the rest of the battle but yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend doing that because the main goal in this game is to defeat uh, viruses and opposing net navvies like as fast as you can doing so will increase your buster rank you're not going to see any of that in this uh, tutorial battle uh, but a better buster rank better prizes so the way to get better buster rank is to defeat your enemies really quickly there's like five or six different factors that will be involved in there like how many times you uh, use your buster I think is one how many times you move around on the panels will affect your uh, your busting level if you take damage will affect your busting level and that's all for school today yeah we didn't have to do any of the boring parts of school um, but we do have other things we can do no I don't want to hear you again uh, can I do anything with this I don't think we can and yeah, if you hear that, that it's, it's the no-no noise, uh, we can battle decks. We're going to do that, but I was just uh, pressing the R button to try and jack in. We can't really jack in anywhere here. Let's do it. And so now we're battling against Gutsman. Is actually going to be somewhat of a challenge here. We're going to start with our steel chip and our sword chip. So Gutsman being a net navvy will just kind of move around however he wants. I'm going to steal and draw him to the... Oh, he got the first move on me. Let's see, he kind of canceled out my chip as I was trying to hit him. Uh, let's try and hit him with these mini bombs. So I like to try and select as many chips as I can generally. Yeah, it's really hard to... Oh. It's really hard to get those mini bombs to work. I need that recover chip. Yeah, and he's doing all these cracked panels. Uh, so the... I have, like, no good... I'll try this mini bomb. I'll try that X panel. Oh, that could X panel could actually be useful here. Oh, I wasn't two spaces. Ah, I'll take out that panel. So now he can't jump in that row and punch me, and his shockwave also won't work in that row. Let's try and sword him down again. Ah, there we go. Thought I had way better timing than than this. Yeah, he likes doing that, doesn't he? Okay, so here's an example. So we have these Recover 10 A's, but I can't pick the Recover 10 L's, even though I have other Recover 10's. Because the Cannon A is a different chip code. The recover chips generally aren't useful in... Oh, wow. Recover chips stop time in... This, uh... This one. Yeah, they do not in other battle networks. I was kind of surprised by that. Get rid of Guts, man. Oh, we didn't get a busting rank there. Well, that's probably for the best. 
Uh, if we talk to him again... Yeah, so if we lost to him, it wouldn't be a game over because it wasn't like a mandatory um, game battle or anything. We were just uh, battling a net battling a friend. Ish. Friend ish. We got email. Power up. Lan, this is Dad. Our dad's name is Dr. Hikari, uh, which actually stands for Dr. Light. He's a scientist. And he'll be at work a lot of times. No, no, I didn't mean to read it again. And we can press L to talk to Mega Man when we're um, out in the world. Forgot to mention something. Oh yeah, chips don't run out. That's one thing I kind of worried about when I saw the chips and I was learning about this battle system. I'm like, oh yeah, so how many times do I get to use a chip? Uh, the chips... You can only use your chip once in a battle, and it's done. But then, once you get, once you leave that particular battle, you will, uh, it'll refresh all the chips. So, the 30 chip, our 30 chip folder here, this is what we're going into battle with every single battle. Oh, jeez, I need to get rid of escape. That's worse. I don't need to escape. Um, neither of these are really good. In the first Battle Network game here, our health, Mega Man's health, will restore fully, af automatically, after each and every battle. So that's why Recover Chips aren't really as useful in the first game. Unless you take a bunch of hits in the middle of battle, but you generally don't want to be doing that. Uh, because you want to get the higher busting ranks, higher busting ranks, better prizes. There are some other places we can go. This is ACDC Town, by the way. There's a lot of music reference. What in the world are you doing? Why is your forehead so big? Another thing you'll notice is there's about a dozen or so um, sprites for... Uh, for like the generic characters, like we got generic looking scientist here. Yep, it's a, every time you get into a battle it's going to be a random draw of the five chips. Which is why you want to try and get as many similar chip codes as possible to increase your consistency. This is the weirdest way to talk to someone, <laughs> have your <laughs> talk back to back to them. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes after beating viruses you get a chip, sometimes you get, uh, Zenny is our currency here. Uh, Dex isn't home, so we can't barge into his house. Melu's house is this pink one. And I want to check out the dog house, so, yeah, if you inspect things that can tell you where there's jack in boards, we can jack into a dog house. Why is the dog house connected to the internet? Who knows? Uh, but it's electronic, so everything is like connected to the internet. So this is a generic internet area. It's just one big flat square uh, plane. And what we're looking for is mystery data. Blue mystery data. Okay, so blue mystery data, it might not work this way in uh, the first Battle Network game, but in every subsequent one, uh, they get consistent with the colors. So blue mystery data will always be the exact same item on any playthrough you get. Uh, the blue mystery data will only appear once. Once you get it, it's gone. It doesn't respawn. Green mystery data will respawn every time you leave the internet and come back to that particular area. We want to get rid of all these recover 10 chips. And here's a random battle. Our first official random battle. Okay, there's a couple ways we can solve this. Oh, another thing that increases your busting rank is taking out multiple viruses uh, at the same time. So we can actually do that with these shotgun chips. We can line these mets up, and we can do that. Launch the other one. Now there's like a pause after those shotguns. And you can see we got busting level S. Uh, the busting ranks are 1 through 10, and rank S, S is the best you can get. We got a shockwave C for our troubles. Now in the first game, you can have 10 of the same named chips in your folder at any time. Uh, in future Battle Networks, it'll be 5. 
Um, I have more... I'm gonna get rid of all of them, but... So yeah, we're gonna get the Shockwave chip. Um, if we go to our library, this is this shows you our chips. And the stars next to them are kind of the... I don't know if it's considered rarity or power. Maybe a mix of both, really. And you can see we have 175 chips in this game to collect. So there's like a Pokemon collecting aspect to this. Each chip will have five different chip codes that it can appear as. Um, busting rank will also kind of determine which chip code you get. But sometimes you get like a virus that cannot, uh, that can only drop like two or three different chip codes. They can't necessarily drop all five. In future Battle Network games, I believe starting with Battle Network 4 it is, uh, each chip will have three chip codes, and then of course the star chip, if it comes in the uh, star chip code, star chip code will be like a bonus. Battle Network 2, everything has the potential for coming into in with a star chip. Chip. Star, star code. We've heard about the exploding ovens, so we have a repairman, uh, which we're going to... I'm not going to talk about the trope just yet, but uh, if you're familiar with this game, you probably you probably know what I'm talking about. Well, I mentioned earlier there's like a dozen or so generic people sprites between like kids and adults and that. It might be a little more than a dozen. Um, and then you'll have people like this guy that look different than those normal people. And when they look different, like, 95% of the time, they're a bad guy. Besides, you know, like our mom and dad, Miss Mari, uh, those people. Okay, so maybe it's like 90% of the time. When they get introduced, when new people get introduced from now on, they're pretty much always going to be bad guys. So we are going to uh, go at our home. We're going to go on our internet by jacking into our computer here. One of the reasons I dislike the first Battle Network game... I don't... I don't really dislike the first Battle Network game. It's not bad. It's not the worst in the series. That belongs to 4. Um, this is the second worst in the series, I would say. And it's kind of by default. Aside from a lot of the terrible design 4 is. So this is the internet. It is very mazy. It's, it's a big, giant maze. And everything looks very similar. Everything looks the same. Nothing like... You can't really tell... The difference between areas without you know having a map or knowing where you are really uh, but we're going to explore the internet more next time